On today's webinar, we are lucky enough to have joining us Laura Schaefer, the Director of Oil and Gas Business Development with Micromotion. With more than 10 years of experience in the oil and gas industry, Laura Schaefer joined Micromotion in 2012 with a focus on new applications for Coriolis measurement production. She holds both a BS and MS degree in chemical engineering from the Colorado School of Mines. In her free time, Laura enjoys hiking and rock crawling in the Rocky Mountains with her family. Welcome, Laura. Thanks, Allison. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Um, today we will cover uh, challenges in allocation measurement and then follow that with uh, an introduction to Micromotion's direct connect applications for multiple phase measurement. Those include production volume reconciliation, transient bubble remediation, transient mist remediation, and smart meter verification. All of these are available directly in our core processor and we'll go through installation options for the Direct Connect and touch on some transmitter options before concluding. As Allison mentioned, please feel free to type in questions anytime during the, uh, the presentation and we will address as many as we can at the end of the presentation and then I'll be sure to touch base on each question uh, following up later. So why are we talking about multiple phases for allocation measurement? Allocation should be a single phase measurement. However, as we've learned uh, over the last several years, uh, multiple phases occur all the time in our allocation measurement for various reasons. Uh, in particular, incomplete separation of fluids, whether that's intentional or unintentional, is, is one source of uh, potential measurement uh, complication. Many of the unintentional multi-phase events can be attributed to issues with the process itself, whether that be a separator or a heater treater. While I won't cover some of the control issues around the uh, separator or heater treater in this uh, talk today, I would encourage you to check out the links in the resource list available in the webinar environment. Maybe uh, bookmark it for, for watching later, but there are videos and resources available from Emerson on how to deal with flow and level control issues that may cause incomplete separation of fluids. A second challenge would be volatile fluids. As we've developed more and more shale here in the U.S., we've seen more and more fluids or hydrocarbons that are incredibly volatile. In this video, you'll see that um, some of our hydrocarbons, when we try to take samples, can look like an amateur, amateur beer pour at a college kegger. As you can see here, you've got uh, some uh, hydrocarbon that's being poured out into a uh, cylinder, and because you're changing from the process pressure to atmospheric pressure, you're releasing many of those light ends that are contained in these light oils that we're trying to measure. As you can imagine, as you take some sort of pressure drop in your process, you can have that same flashing or foaming occur in your meter, complicating your measurement. One of the big challenges is that traditional meters are single phase, and the presence of multi-phases requires complicated equations, correction factors, and definitely drops the uncertainty of your measurement. So this has been a challenge for most traditional flow technologies. When you see, for example, the blue line there that indicates the flow rate through your meter, you see that increase there later on, and you wonder, is that gas, is that a gas bubble, or is that real oil flow? And that skepticism can, that is introduced can create tremendous uncertainty and, and confusion when it comes to forecasting and understanding exactly what a well is producing. Unfortunately, true multi-phase meters that would be able to handle this sort of complicated flow are often far too costly for most onshore wells. So we're left with traditional technologies. But let's pause for a moment and reflect. What is the greatest challenge you face today in accurate allocation measurement? Is it reconciliation of your month-end totals? Is it regulatory compliance? Is it that your meter is not measuring accurately the volatility of hydrocarbon, or is it wet gas that's your biggest challenge right now? We'll give you just a, a moment to, to reply here, and then we'll check the poll results from the field.
All right. So as is consistent with uh, with my experience also, very often folks attribute their uh, challenge and allocation measurement to the meter not measuring accurately. You see there that we had about 35% of the uh, uh, attendees uh, attributing the challenge to the meter. Um, interesting that uh, second highest, we had wet gas as a challenge, and certainly when we get to the transient mist remediation, we'll cover how to more accurately measure that wet gas. But that said, let's focus on the meter now. So a single variable measurement just isn't enough for multiple phases. As shown with the orifice uh, plate uh, video, you can see that you're just taking a single DP measurement there and you have no idea exactly how much liquid's going through. Fortunately, Coriolis meters, as most of you on the phone know, provide independent mass, density, and temperature measurements. For those who need a brush up on Coriolis fundamentals, Again, see that resource link in the resource pane, and there's a video uh, in there on introduction to Coriolis technology. But it's this multivariable aspect of the Coriolis, the mass, the density, and the temperature, coupled with a diagnostic measurement called drive gain that are all critical to making better measurement with multiple phases. Drive gain, if some of you aren't as familiar with drive gain, Drive gain is that diagnostic that measures the percent power required to keep the Coriolis tubes vibrating. Drive gain is inherently low when a meter is full with a single phase. So we'll start with the graphic on the far left. And you see your drive gain is low. It's in that uh, peach color there. Depending on the meter size, meter type, meter construction, you can expect drive gain to either be in the single digits or up to 20%, depending on installation and type. So you expect that drive gain to be low when full with a single phase. However, a ch um, however, if you have another phase introduced into the Coriolis meter, device drive gain will increase. So that includes if you've got the meter full with gas, and then you introduce mist, drive gain will increase. If you have the meter full with liquid and you introduce a bubble, drive gain will increase. So we can use drive gain as an indicator to help us differentiate between changes in composition versus multiple, the presence of multiple phases. So again, starting on that far left side, you'll see that device gain remains low and then density increases after some certain time. However, with that density increase, there is no increase in the drive gain. Because of that, we know that's a change in uh, composition of the fluid going through the meter, not an addition of another phase. So in this case, we, if we know our flow is oil and water, we know that our water cut has increased. Now, you move to the second uh, graphic there, and you can see, again, we have a liquid or oil flowing. Then you see the density drop. Now, how do I know that density drop isn't an increase in my, or a decrease in my water cut or an increase in, in the amount of oil flowing? Well, in this case, I look at drive gain, and drive gain saturates to 100% very quickly as that density decreases. That is positive confirmation for me that I have gas entrained in my oil and not a change in the composition of the liquid going through the meter. This is fantastic because now we can start using drive gain and density to improve our measurement when multiple phases are, are present. In the last graphic on the far right, you've got very, very low density, indicating that we're looking at a gas flow here. And then you'll see drive gain and density increase simultaneously. And that's positive confirmation that you've got now liquid in your gas flow. So now that we've established the basics of how we're going to go about this, let's better understand the Direct Connect applications that are being offered by Micromotion to handle these. Um, let's start with some acronyms and definitions. So NOC, uh, and I'll use all these acronyms quite a bit. NOC is the net oil calculation. 
This is where we use a dense, the density measurements out of the Coriolis meter to calculate net oil and net water. TBR, transient bubble remediation, adjusts liquid volume to account for intermittent bubbles. TMR is transient mist remediation. This is when we adjust the gas mass to account for intermittent mist. Uh, good distinction there. For TBR, which is for liquids, we're adjusting the volume. For TMR, we're adjusting the mass for the gas flow. Next is PVR, which is production volume reconciliation. This application provides net oil and net water volumes via the density-based net oil calculation, or NOC, for both line and reference conditions. But PVR also combines that net oil calculation with TBR, so it will detect bubbles going through the meter also. So PVR is a combination of NOC and TBR. Finally, smart meter verification uh, is a micromotion proprietary technique to verify the integrity of the sensor and transmitter, providing you confidence that the meter itself is performing well. A few definitions here as we get into the complicated uh, realm of determining uh, whether we're looking at a modified volume versus an unmodified volume. So first term uh, that I'd like to introduce introduce is uncorrected. An uncorrected variable is a variable at, a process variable at line temperature. So if I'm flowing through my meter and it's coming straight out of a separator and it's at 110 degrees Fahrenheit, if I look at that, vol that uncorrected volume, that is the volume flowing at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. If I look at the corrected um, volume, that is the vol that same volume corrected to, to uh, be equivalent to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And it is important to note that for these applications, particularly PVR, it is available only with 60 degrees Fahrenheit as a standard condition at this point in time. Finally, remediated is a process variable that has been adjusted to account for periods of entrained gas or mist. So my difference between my remediated and uncorrected variable is that I may see 100 uh, barrels go through my meter, and that's uncorrected. My remediated would subtract out, say, 15 gallons from that volume because we've noticed because of drive gain and density that that 15 gallons was actually attributable to a bubble, okay, just as an example. So those are the terms that are used uh, in all the, the manuals and all the documentation around these Direct Connect applications. All right, let's start with PVR or production reconciliation or production volume reconciliation. PVR is ideal if you have challenges with volatile fluids off your three-phase separator or have carryover of water in your oil leg. Um, or if you have a two-phase separator uh, PVR will help you distinguish between the oil and the water going through your, your meter, giving you net oil, net water, but still subtracting out any volume attributable to bubbles. PVR has full density-based net oil computing coupled with the ability to remediate for bubbles. For those of you that are familiar with um, our 3000 series transmitters and the NOC offered there, this is different because it is, again, something that is available in the core processor, and it doesn't track multiple wells, for example. So our 3000 series can track up to 48 wells. In this case, we're only tracking a single well. Okay. So very quickly on the net oil calculation and how this works, um, volume... Uh, We'll look at the water cut equation first. You see there that the meter itself measures the density of the mixture going through the meter. We input the green variables into the core processor, into the Modbus registers that we have assigned for these. You'll input the density of oil and the density of water at standard conditions. It's very important to recognize that the accuracy of the density of oil input and the density of the water input is key to making a good water cut calculation. 
That water cut calculation then goes into the final net oil and net water calculation. So volume gross is measured from the meter uh, from the mass and density. So we get volume gross via direct mass, direct density. We then multiply volume gross by one minus water cut to get the volume of our oil. Accuracy of the Coriolis meter, especially the density accuracy, is very, very important to maintaining accuracy in your final calculation of net oil. So when you're looking at what's the best flow meter uh, or what's the best Coriolis meter to select if I'm going to be doing a net oil calculation, definitely consider the density accuracy uh, specification when you do select that meter. Um, Uncertainty sources, extreme water cuts, if we're on the far, far end of uh, water cut, whether that be extremely high water cut or extremely low water cut, that can introduce some additional uncertainty. And uh, a, another uncertainty source is the density contrast. If the densities of your two fluids are very, very close, i.e. heavy oil, you'll have less certainty in your final NOC calculation. So I've talked a little bit about certainty here. Um, for the micromotion density-based net oil calculation, we very much encourage uh, that you pay close attention to recommendations for getting good density measurements for your oil and water. Um, as you saw before with the video of the hydrocarbon sample being taken at atmospheric pressure, you can see that we're losing a lot of light ends out of that sample. When you lose those light ends, you get a uh, misrepresentative density out of that measurement that's taken at atmospheric. You might get a density that is perhaps slightly heavier than you would get if you were able to take a sample at pressure, because at pressure you retain those light ends. So taking a laboratory sample can be a, a pressurized sample and sending it to a certified laboratory, uh, that is one of the better ways to get that accurate oil density. Another uh, technique would be to use a flowing density. For example, you could allow uh, your oil and water to separate in your separator uh, as much as possible and then run those fluids sequentially through the flow meter and take your high and low densities as, as you flow through as your um, densities at process. Remember that you do have to convert process density to standard densities for input into the meter. Um, certainly your local micromotion rep uh, or LBP rep could help you with that and please don't hesitate to contact us uh, when you are setting up the PVR or net oil computing. The last aspect of PVR is that we have the transient bubble remediation embedded in there to handle bubbles. Let's take a moment to go through TBR. So TBR is both embedded in PVR and available as a standalone application. Um, TBR is available in all models of uh, micromotion flow meters, whether it has a 700 or 800 core. No transmitter is required. Um, let's go through some of the features here or how this works. So how do we remediate for bubbles? Recall that drive gain indicates two phases uh, when it goes high. So when drive gain exceeds a set threshold and we get to set that threshold in TBR, we'll know that a bubble is present. Because volume is calculated and density is strongly influenced by the presence of the bubble, the volume measurement is higher than it should be for the liquid. And that's shown in that graphic there when the bubble occurs. You can see that blue line represents the volume flow popping up to be much higher than it should be. However, the mass measurement continues to be fairly accurate for the liquid because gas relative to the liquid has no mass. So to calculate the volume of liquid, and you see the equations at the bottom, we use the measured mass divided by the known density of the liquid. Okay, so what does this look like? As an example, you'll see here, um, you'll be measuring volume in the gray, and so that's the graphic on the left, and you'll see suddenly um, an event occurs. So 
that would be, say, the drive gain pops up above a particular threshold. When the drive gain exceeds that threshold, it triggers TBR to be active, and it will actually look back in time and use a previously known good density as the density of the liquid and continue to look at the mass during the, the event and divide by the known uh, density of the liquid. This gives you uh, an interpolation of what the volume of the liquid should be during the bubble event, preventing you from overreading on your volume during that event. So with remediation, you can see you have a much smoother volume measurement and you will have a lower volume measurement at the or lower volume total at the end because you've subtracted out the volume that's attributable to bubbles. There are two options for selecting that density of the liquid. Uh, the first is to use the last known good. So that's when we, we see that uh, the drive gain uh, has exceeded a threshold, and we look back a set number of seconds, average the density that set number of seconds behind, and then we use that as representative of the liquid. However, for dumping or, or for separators that have uh, dump valves, for example, this may not be the best method because what can happen is between dumps, uh, water can separate from the oil in your meter, raising your density above what would be flowing through the meter uh, during the dump itself. And so in this case, particularly for three-phase separators that have dump valve actuation, we highly encourage users to use the second option, which is a user input dry oil density. So this will still recognize that um, the density goes high between dumps, but during the dump when you expect that oil is predominantly present, it will use that density of the oil to correct for any bubbles that occur. So we've talked extensively about what to do for liquids that have bubbles present, transient mist remediation takes those same principles and applies them to gas. So this is particularly interesting to customers who are concerned that they are giving away liquids with their gas. So by installing a Coriolis meter with TMR on your gas legs, you can identify how much liquid is, is going down to the pipeline operator and make changes to your process to try to decrease this. So TMR is available only with 800 enhanced core processors. It's not available in the 700 core. And it removes that measurement error due to mist or intermittent liquids. So it provides you a more accurate mass flow for your gas. But because it tracks both the remediated and unremediated mass totals, you can subtract those two to identify your liquid giveaway. So how it works is it tracks the mass flow rate, and again, when drive gain exceeds a certain threshold, it looks at both the gas mass flow rate before the event and the gas mass flow rate after the event, and then interpolates between that before and after flow rate to give you uh, a continuous average during that event period. So if flow rate is higher before the event and lower after the event, it will then actually uh, average those two flow rates and then add back or subtract out uh, the mass difference between the difference in those flow rates before and after the event. So you'll have the remediated total, which will give you more accurate gas, and then the unremediated would continue to track the mass during that event that is attributable to liquids. So in your flow computer, you can compare that remediated and unremediated total and approximate the liquid that's been given away. Finally, available also as a Direct Connect application in conjunction with any of these other uh, Direct Connect applications is smart meter verification. Smart meter verification um, provides an excellent way to establish confidence in the performance of your flow meter 
through analysis of secondary variables. This is akin to what you may already do with, say, an orifice plate, where you pull the orifice plate out and you uh, inspect it um, and then put it back in. That inspection is akin to verification. Uh, however, with the Coriolis flow meter, you don't have to pull anything out and you don't have to disrupt your process, which is excellent. There is a difference between calibration versus validation versus verification. Just a reminder, calibration is what we do at the factory and your meter comes calibrated from the factory. Validation, uh, you may or may not be trying to validate your meter's performance with proving. However, with allocation, calibration, sending the meter back to the factory for calibration, or proving even can be very, very uh, costly and can take a lot of time. This is where verification is a very attractive um, way to establish confidence without the expense and without the time involved with calibration or validation. So let's test real quick, how do you currently confirm meter performance in allocation application? Go ahead and Work with me here is, do you verify with smart meter verification already? Are you familiar with it already? Do you send the meter to a third-party lab or factory for calibration? Do you validate by proving against a master meter? Or validate by proving against a ball prover or small volume prover? Or do you not confirm? We just accept the meter as is from the factory and we don't run any verification at this point in time. We'll just give a moment for folks to respond here. And it looks like the majority actually confirm against a ball prover or small volume prover. Um, certainly for allocation, that, um, that's a bit of a surprise for me. I'll have to look into that. But certainly validating by proving against a master meter is, is, is commonly what we see. Um, but certainly consideration of smart meter verification um, could give you further insight to the accuracy of your meter. Just a follow-up question here. How frequently do you confirm meter performance in allocation applications? Weekly? Monthly? quarterly, only upon significant change in field or well performance, or never. Give a moment here. All right, so the majority of respondents check quarterly. That's interesting. Certainly, things can change within a quarter, so verification could give you that further insight um, between those quarterly provings. Certainly, Coriolis meters have incredible stability over time. Uh, with no wearing parts and performance immunity to changes in viscosity, density, and temperature, Proving a Coriolis can sometimes be burdensome and costly when you already know the answer that the Coriolis is very, very stable. Because of that, we've got the smart meter verification that actually verifies the integrity of the entire meter, and it does that for the measurement element through testing tube stiffness. I would encourage you, if you're not familiar with smart meter verification, to again look at the resource list where we have both the white paper and link to video that explain more about on exactly how smart meter verification works. We would like to note that smart meter verification is widely accepted across industries and by numerous organizations, including API 5.6 and API 20.2 uh, for allocation. That is currently on the ballot, and we're estimating sometime this year we'll see that finalized version that will recognize smart meter verification as an alternative to proving. Um, additionally, I'd like to shout out to the Canadians uh, where AER 
also recognizes smart meter verification for uh, hydrocarbon fiscal uh, transfer. So a few notes to wrap up on installation before we open it up to questions. Um, there's a significant advantage to going with a direct connect application when looking at allocation measurement, particularly when you have multiple wells on the same well pad. The direct connect application allows you to connect multiple meters to the RTU with no bottleneck concerns. You don't have to worry about any latency on the line uh, getting information from that meter back to the flow computer because all those calculations are done in the core processor and the totals are kept in the core processor. If you have any interruption with that flow computer, you still have integrity of that measurement as you connect back up and the new total is pushed to the RTU. Um, this is particularly important because if you were to try to do these calculations in the RTU or flow computer, um, you can miss volume, particularly with separators that, are on, uh, that have dump valve actuation. actuation. When I think of many of the customers that I've visited and, and the, the cycle of their dumps, the dumps are only occurring for a few seconds at a time. So if you miss a few data points, your calculation can get off significantly if you're relying on that RTU. By doing the uh, calculation in the core processor, it doesn't matter how short that dump cycle is, we're doing the calculation at the speed of the core processor so you will always have the most accurate calculated measurement when using these applications. Final note on installation. Because this application sits in the core processor, you can connect either via uh, an intrinsically safe barrier or via a transmitter uh, to your flow computer. Additionally, uh, a shout out to the those with Flowboss or Rock flow computers. You could use a Coriolis interface module or SIM card to very, very quickly and seamlessly map the new variables, the new Modbus variables from these direct application or direct connect applications uh, to your RTU, so you don't have to spend significant time uh, going and Modbus mapping for each of your installs. So if you do have a Flowboss or Rock, the SIM card can uh, greatly ease your installation uh, challenges with these Direct Connect applications. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for your time this morning. Um, and I'd like to just wrap up and say that the Direct Connect applications that you've seen here today, PVR, TBR, TMR, can provide the insight and improved accuracy for measurement of your flows that have multiple phases. Again, PVR for net oil and net water, TBR for entrained gas in your liquid flow, TMR for mist in your gas flow, and SMV for your online meter ver verification. By installing these applications in your core processors, you can reduce your power consumption and installation overhead uh, and reduce your overall uncertainty with your application measurements. With that, we'll open it up for questions. Thank you so much, Laura, for what a great presentation and all this great information. We'd now like to open it up for questions as Laura just mentioned. So just as a reminder, please use the Q&A chat panel in the upper corner. And we already have quite a lot of questions coming in, so I think Laura will let you jump in. And, and if we don't get to all the questions today, because we have a lot of folks on the call, um, please don't be concerned. Uh, Laura will get back to you via email afterwards. Um, and you can always ask questions um, both via the, the link at the bottom um, and your flow expert uh, will get back to you, or you can contact Laura directly. So, Laura, I'll hand it on over to you. So, we've got a few questions already uh, on the maximum gas volume fraction that can be handled with these applications. And that's a great question. And I'd like to, to address it by stepping back for a second. Um, there is no maximum gas void fraction limit to, for example, TBR or PVR, 
because they operate through basically interpolation through events, what's most important for these applications is that these events be intermittent. If you have continuous gas flow, even if that's continuous gas flow at say 3% GVF, these applications won't do you a lot of good. You need to have that quiescent period or period with low drive gain to be able to grab an accurate hold or accurate density measurement to allow you to measure through that event. Uh, so, so we don't have a hard GVF limit, but we would say you're looking for applications where those events occur occasionally or with several seconds between event and you don't have continuous high drive gain. In the event of continuous high drive gain, you're looking at compromising uh, the accuracy over time, for sure. So hopefully that answers uh, for that particular question, that we don't have a hard limit on GVF, but rather we're looking for applications where GVF or where drive gain does go low, where you do have periods that do not have gas present or periods where you do not have mist present. Um, very often, installation of the meter can help you combat that and help you generate periods of uh, low drive gain. Um, certainly, if you're looking at a gas application and you install the meter tubes down, it might be very easy to have uh, a permanent little liquid puddle in your Coriolis meter that would uh, invalidate T TMR as, as a good application for you. Whereas if you were to mount that meter uh, flag with flow down, you would fa be facilitating clearing that liquid out of the meter as quickly as possible, getting you back to a low drive gain measurement, allowing you to read through those periods. All right. Let's go to another question here. Is the SIM card available with PVR as an application at this point? Uh, it is. It is available for both the Flowboss and the ROC computers. If you're interested in more in, uh, details on that, don't hesitate to contact me or uh, Laura Gonzalez with RAS. A question on progress with the 5700 and quantifying GVF. Uh, for those that uh, are in the know, our newest and latest transmitter, the 5700, uh, has just been released this month with the PVR, TMR, and TBR functions added. Um, however, they are more advanced. Uh, as far as there's a lot more intelligence that goes into the interpolation period there for the 5700. If you have a customer or you are a customer that's interested in, in beta trialing this more advanced functionality that we have in the 5700 for looking at multiple phase measurements, uh, please contact me as this is, again, in beta right now. Next question, how do the meters handle solids that may be entrained in the liquid flowing? What happens to the density reading? Uh, great question here because, again, if you have two phases, and those phases could be liquid and a solid, uh, for example, sand coming through your meter, or uh, very often we uh, install Coriolis meters on drilling mud returns that have cutting solids uh, entrained, those solids also will cause an increase in drive gain. Um, so conceivably, if you had an application, and this may not be an oil and gas application, but if you had an application where you had a liquid and a solid, you could potentially use the PVR functionality to calculate uh, solids going through or a net solids versus your net liquid. So it is possible to uh, adapt these algorithms to things other than just oil and water or uh, liquid and gas. Um, so interesting question there, uh, but that solids, they do also impact drive gain in the same way that a bubble going through liquid would also. 
Uh, the second part of that question is what happens to the density reading. Uh, again, a Coriolis meter gives you a bulk density measurement. It does not give you uh, a measurement of the liquid and the gas or the liquid and the solid. It's giving you bulk density of, of what is in the meter. So if solids go through the meter, you will see an increase in the density measured. Another question, is it correct that bubble and mist remediation is a part of software functionality and can be enabled or disabled? Um, that is true, uh, particularly with the 5700. You can turn these functionalities on and off um, from the interface. For the Direct Connect applications, you can always go in with ProLink and turn it on or off. Um, additionally, uh, for all of these, they will track both remediated and unremediated totals. So you can simultaneously look at um, the, what your volume value or your mass value would be without the software, and you can compare that to with the software. This has been really useful for some customers who use this as a diagnostic to see if uh, changes that they make to their process impact the amount of multiphase that they see going through their meter. So for example, uh, we had a customer who um, had installed the transient mist remediation, TMR, on their gas check meter. And looking at that total at the end of the month, they could see how often the meter was, ex was experiencing high drive gain. And then they were able to tweak their dehydrator operation to then decrease the amount of mist that they were seeing or the amount of liquids that they were giving away each month. So certainly you can look at the remediated and unremediated variables to make process improvements. Going through... Um, We had uh, one comment from a, a customer saying that uh, it's impossible to get an accurate proof on volatile liquids, and certainly very, very challenging, having been out on site myself for uh, several, several pro uh, proving attempts on volatile liquids. Um, it, it makes for a very, very long day. Um, if you're interested in, in some best practices there, definitely don't hesitate to contact us. Let's see here. A uh, question, has the Coriolis meter been used for well testing in heavy oil wells? Um, certainly the Coriolis meter is a fantastic option for heavy oil wells. In that case, if, if we are doing well tests and you're off of a, uh, a test separator, you've got a very good chance to use TBR in that case. Uh, to try to uh, get a more accurate liquid measurement off that test. Um, we have seen some instances where the uh, oil was very, very foamy, and we were unable to get a good density read, but certainly um, that's something that can be tackled. Uh, so I would encourage you to reach out to us if you do have such an application um, certainly with the new functionality, the beta functionality that's being offered in the 5700, that is an application that we are very confident that we can tackle. Uh, there is a question as to whether smart meter verification is accepted on cu custody transfer meters with the BLM. Unfortunately, the BLM is still operating off onshore orders four and five uh, from 1989. Uh, we understand that there is a new draft in process, but at this point in time, uh, smart meter verification is not uh, recognized. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, 
Uh, there was a question, does Micromotion offer a true multi-phase meter that can measure oil, water, and gas? Uh, yes, via the Rockstar uh, brand name and product line, we do offer onshore true multi-phase meters that can measure oil, water, and gas. Uh, if interested in more information on the Rockstar product line, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. A question, would it be accurate to say that the accuracy of the volume of oil calculated, or the net oil, I believe, is just as dependent on the input oil and water density values as the bulk density calculation done by the meter. Um, absolutely, your net oil calculation, your net oil accuracy is incredibly dependent on the accuracy of the input oil density and water density. Um, that is probably one of the biggest challenges with using a density-based net oil uh, computer that we've seen in our Series 3000 and in uh, the PVR application itself is just getting that, that oil density and water density correct and correctly input at standard uh, temperature. Um, this is again why we would strongly suggest if, if you're doing this for the first time, if you're setting up PVR or net oil for the first time, uh, definitely get your, your Micromotion or LBP rep involved so we can help you do that right and explain some of the nuances there uh, to help you get the, the best density possible. If you are looking at what is my accuracy with the net oil for my oil and water setup, we do have um, a net oil uncertainty calculator and we can uh, walk through your particular situation and let you know what sort of accuracy you might expect based on the accuracy that you know your, your oil and water inputs and on the accuracy of the meter. Uh, there was a question on what's the difference between the 700 and 800 cores on the feature sets? Um, the 700 core, for those of you uh, not as familiar, is uh, the older uh, Core, um, core processor that was uh, offered with micromotion meters uh, many years ago. We still offer the 700, but uh, generally for multi-phase applications, we, we encourage folks to move to the 800 core processor. The 800 core processor has additional um, signal processing in it that assists in improving accuracy in entrain gas applications. Um, and that would be true for PVR, TBR, and TMR. Your best, um, best accuracy, best measurement is going to come with that 800 core. However, um, we do still have TBR available for the 700 core. So if you already have a number of, say, R meters installed, we can look at installing TBR on those older 700 cores for you. Uh, let's see here, looking for other questions. Apologies, the questions are all coming in uh, interspersed with one another. <laughs> Uh, question, which transmitters support these applications? Um, these applications are supported through the 1500, 2500, 1700, and 2700 uh, transmitters. Again, you do not need a transmitter to run these direct applications, direct connect applications, but if you do want that local interface and to locally read, for example, net oil, um, it is possible to, to get support for those transmitters. Uh, like I mentioned, the 5700 now supports it, but please contact uh, me directly if you're interested in the 5700. We have a few questions that are very specific to specific wells. I'll, I'll go ahead and take those uh, as emails after the fact. Perfect. 
Well, thank you so much, Laura, for such a great presentation. And thank you all for all these great questions that Laura just mentioned. A lot of them are very specific, and we also just don't have the time to go through all of them. So, Laura, we'll get back to you uh, via email. If you think of any questions after the webinar, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can either use the button at the bottom of the screen or you can directly contact us afterwards. We want to thank you again for joining us today. And as a reminder, we will be sending out a link to the recording for the webinar tomorrow, which you can then either use to watch it again or share with your colleagues and friends. Um, in the email, there will also be links to all the resources that you see in the sidebar here, so you can access those again after the, the event. On behalf of our guest, Laura Schaefer, as well as everyone at Emerson Micromotion, we want to thank you again for joining us and taking the time to view this presentation with us, and we hope you all have a great day. Thank you.